today, viewer. This is another time on Hour of Reasoning Together on MOR TV. Today, we are looking at uh, what is really wrong with what most of our preachers are preaching today. You turn here, you turn there, different kinds of sermon, teachings, everywhere among Christians, preachers. So what is really wrong with what most of them are preaching? Thank you for listening. Uh, good day, man. Good day, sir. Uh, we are hearing different kind of messages from our pulpit these days. Uh, what do you think is wrong with what most of our preachers preach or teach today, man? Uh, many things are wrong. Okay. Because many uh, preachers... They didn't follow the Bible doctrine. All right. They are following their own doctrine. Okay. So, no. And when they go to pupil, they pe preach their doctrine. Okay. There was a time I went to a church and uh, they said, what we preach here is we preach prosperity. And I wonder that, uh, so you didn't preach the gospel. Right. Is it prosperity you are now preaching? So, since that time, I decided not to go to that church. Because I know that what we're supposed to preach as a Christian is Jesus Christ. So not prosperity. That one can follow. Mm? Uh -huh. So even the Bible says that we should seek the kingdom of God first. Other things we follow. So I know preaching the word of God is most important to people. You no, know? getting them convert, not the uh, not getting rich riches or whatever. Uh -huh. All those are jarasses. Thank you very much. Thank you. God, God bless. Good day, ma. Good day, sir. Uh, we had preachers these days. They preach all kinds of a thing. What do you think is wrong with what most of our preachers preach today? Thank you, sir. What the problem that we have that is causing this is because some the preachers, the pastors, they don't want to say the truth again. All because they want to retain their members so by that they are now preaching the blessing talking about the i mean they advertise i see it as an ad advertisement so because they make it as business in order to retain the members they they don't say the truth because if they say the truth they believe the members will leave the church so in order not to lose the members of the church they pray against the poverty they pray I mean, they make it as advertisement. They make it as business. All right. Thank you very much. You are welcome. God bless you. Amen. Uh, good day, ma. You are welcome. Uh, different messages, teachings on our pulpit today. Uh, what do you think is wrong with most of what our preachers are preaching today? And today, the focus is much on prosperity. And because people want money, we have discovered that we are not really putting every effort and it is wrong it is wrong if we have lost, lost the focus of the evangelism which is the core okay. of our salvation so love of money the bible says it is the root of all evil so the love of money has taken a lot from us thank you very much yes thank you god bless you Amen different messages on our pulpit today. What do you think is wrong with what most of our preachers are preaching and teaching today? Mm. Many preachers are no longer preaching the right word of the Lord. They are preaching prosperity. Okay. Prosperity, order of the day. Yes. Which cannot take one to heaven. Prosperity, everything will be left here on earth at the end of the day. So if you prosper here on earth and you don't have, I mean, Hope of heaven okay. coming to the world is, is in vain. Thank you. Ah, thank you very much. A good day, sir. You are welcome, sir. Uh, we discovered that there are so many preachings, teachings everywhere today among denomination preachers. Uh, what do you think is really wrong with what most of our preachers are preaching today? Uh, you see, our so-called preachers and teachers of the, of the world today, some of them might some of them might have a, a wrong objective okay. uh, that they base their teaching upon okay. completely deviating from original plan of god right. like jesus the mindset of jesus uh, is that he will take people to heaven okay. 
But today, some of these are our preachers. They are preaching and their preachings is tending towards acquiring wealth okay. from uh, congregations. Okay. That's why we say that some of them, some of them, some of them, their preaching is to acquire wealth from for wealth acquisition, not in the perspective of taking people to to the kingdom of God. All right, thank you very much, sir. You are welcome, sir. Uh, good day, sir. Good day. Uh, we hear so many messages today online, on the pulpit, cable network, all kinds of uh, sermons, teachings, preachings from different churches. What do you think is really wrong with what most of our preachers are preaching today? Christ is, you know, should be the center of believers' messages. But today, reverse is the case. What we are hearing is, you know, self-centered messages in the name of what they want to get craziness madness of this power i mean craving for wealth fame and so on so i think any message that lacks this generation lacks you know christ preaching christ so from my own perspective thank you very much you're welcome you're welcome to Hour of Reasoning Together on MOR TV. Uh, today, we are looking at um, what is wrong with what most uh, of our preachers are preaching and teaching today. As you have heard from the interview, uh, you've had quite a number of things that uh, people said are wrong with what most uh, of our preachers are preaching today uh, the question is what is wrong with what most of our preachers are preaching and teaching today <sighs> i think uh, if i would answer that question straight i would say many things are wrong with what most of our preachers are preaching today Many things are wrong. Many, many things are wrong. And I would begin from even the foundation. And what is the foundation? The foundation is the gospel. At least, that is the starting point. The scripture says, Jesus gave his last command. Go ye into the world and preach the gospel teaching men to observe all that Jesus had told his disciples. He said we should go into the whole world and make disciples. We should go into the world and preach the gospel and teach them the teachings, the doctrines of Jesus Christ. And um, the gospel, as we know, is called good news. And when we say good news, why is it good news? It is good news because it is a news that tells a sinner that someone has died and has risen again to reconcile that person back to God. Uh, this some, if you are an unbeliever, if you have not really given your life to Christ and you are listening or you are watching us, you may not really understand this thing, but I will break it down a little. In the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve sinned, there was a death. Because God told them that uh, the day they ate from that fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, that fruit, he said that same day they would die. And the day they ate, they actually died. But not the physical death. Not the one that they will die and they will be buried. No. They died spiritually. And what do we mean by spiritual death? There was a spiritual... They were separated from God. And it was an eternal separation. Man was separated from God. And uh, since then, God has been looking for ways to bring man back. To reconcile man back to him. But unfortunately, no man is qualified to do that. No man. No man. I mean no man. Because we are all criminals. And no criminal 
is no criminal can bail a colleague criminal under in almost all the countries of the world in every constitution of every country a criminal under the law is cannot get a criminal out of prison or get a criminal out of uh, no it's not it's not done anywhere in the whole world and so the same thing with god this separation is an eternal thing and it requires an eternal being at the same time a physical being and that is why christ came he was fully god and fully man to be able to pay the price to be able to to redeem man back from eternal damnation from eternal loss man is lost eternally and so jesus came fully god and fully man so that he would be able to die shed his blood and die and redeem man back and this is what jesus came to do to deliver man from sin that separated man from god and this is the good news that man that is lost forever could be brought back into a relationship with God and it could be called children sons and daughters of God again no wonder the apostle John in chapter 3 says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons and daughters of God, children of God. No, it is, it is the peak of what God can do for man. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And that is the gospel. Gospel, Jesus came to redeem man back from sin, to deliver man from sin. The primary reason why Jesus came, the sole reason why Jesus came, is to deliver man from sin and restore the relationship, the lost relationship, and reconnect man back to God. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21 says, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So, the gospel is all about deliverance from sin. That is the whole thing about gospel. How a man will be delivered from sin and be restored back into a son, father, daughter, father relationship with God. Simple as that. But today, what are we preaching as the gospel? No wonder. If gospel is all about the deliverance jesus has brought for man the deliverance from sins that jesus has brought for man no wonder the apostle john again said in chapter 3 verse 9 he said those who have been born into god's family do not make a practice of sinning because god's life is in them so they can't keep on sinning because they are children of God. We are delivered. The gospel is Christ came. He died and he rose again to set man free from sin. To restore him back to God. Anything outside that is no longer going to be the gospel. But what we preach today is um, different kinds of gospel. Oh, you don't have children come to jesus you are barren come to jesus you don't have money come to jesus jesus will make you rich you don't have children come to jesus jesus will give you children you don't have job come to jesus jesus will give you job you don't have this come to you don't have good husband come to jesus jesus will give you husband you don't have good wives come to jesus jesus will give you good wives come to and we call people to jesus for what they are going to gain from jesus christ we call them to Christ because for only what they will gain from Christ. And that is not the gospel. No wonder we have multitude trooping in, coming into Jesus 
because what we present to them as gospel is not the gospel. So they, they came in and in their multitude they have come now and most of them are disappointed at the end of the day because what he promised them that Jesus would do for them most of the times and for many of them Jesus did not do it for them because he didn't promise them that. We are the ones who are promising them what God never promised them. Yes, can Jesus make someone rich? Of course. Can Jesus give a barren person children? Of course. Can Jesus give someone who does not have job a job? Oh, of course he can do all those things, but he never promised them. He does that at his own discretion and whenever he pleases to do that, that is when he, we should let people that are coming to Christ know that, yes, God can do that. He is able to do much more than that, but that is not the purpose for them to come to Christ. The purpose a man should come to Christ is for the deliverance of his deliverance from sin and his, his redemption, his salvation, the salvation of his soul, and then to be brought into a union, a relationship with God. A reconciliation. He should be reconciled back to God. No wonder Paul said we are given the ministry of reconciliation, reconciling men back to God. That is what the gospel is all about. Reconciling men back to God. Reconciling men back to God. To have a good relationship with God. But we have missed it even from the beginning. We present the wrong gospel to people. And when we present the wrong gospel to people, what do we expect as result? The result we expect is what we are... The result we are seeing is what we should expect. Though we did not expect that but that is what we should expect to see all kinds of things that we see happening today and uh, the whole world uh, the christian christians are, are said to be the highest number of people on earth with over about 2.5 billion people practicing christianity and all that and the whole world is not better for it especially in most countries of the world where where christianity is largely embraced where they have more christians than even other religion and all that the countries are not even better for it why will it it will not the countries will not be better because those that we call christians are not really christians they have not really encountered grace they've not encountered christ and that is the first problem that we have the gospel we are preaching we are not preaching uh, 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 the real gospel inside in the gospel i will still i will still i will still mention that that uh, in the gospel uh, 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 there are few things in the gospel that we are not emphasizing today but i will come to that later then apart from the foundational error that we see, that is the, the gospel problem that people, preachers are preaching, we have some other problems that preachers are not really preaching today. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 5, verse 42, I'm reading New King James Version. It says, And daily in the temple, and in every house, they did not see I'm preaching Jesus as the Christ. Did you hear that? What, what did they say? They were preaching and teaching daily from house to house, in temple, everywhere. They were preaching and teaching Jesus Christ as the Christ. They were not preaching any other thing. They were not teaching any other thing. They were preaching and teaching Jesus Christ. But what are we preaching? What are we teaching today? Paul told the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5, he says, For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, your born servants, for Jesus' sake. Hmm. That is very deep. Paul was telling the Corinthians that they were not preaching themselves. They were only preaching Christ Jesus the Lord. In Acts of the Apostles, they were preaching Jesus the Christ. Paul said they were also preaching Jesus the Lord. Can't you see that? Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ. 
that is the anointed one. Christ means the anointed one. So they were only preaching Jesus, the anointed one. And then the, in another place, Paul said they were preaching Jesus, the Lord. The Lord, the owner of everything. The preeminence over everything. But where, how many denominations, how many preachers, how many general overseers, how many founders of, of denominations are preaching Jesus, the Lord, today? Are preaching Jesus, and preaching Jesus only. That hymn says, Jesus only is a message. Jesus should be the only message that we should be preaching. Preaching Jesus. There is a place in, 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 in the book of Corinthians where Paul said he does not want to know anything among the Corinthians except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That is what we are expected to preach and teach. Jesus and Jesus only. Jesus and Jesus alone. But uh, today, what are we preaching? We are preaching gospel of self-esteem. We are preaching self. We are, in fact, we, we talk more about ourselves than we talk about Christ who commissioned us. When you hear some preachers, they will talk and talk about themselves, how they went to this place and, and they did this miracle as if they did it by their own power, as if they are the owner of the anointing they are using, as if they are the, they are the one who actually did that miracle. They say all kind of a thing. They talk about how they went to this place, how they went to that place, how they did this, how they fasted. They boast about their fasting. I fasted for 365 days. And after that fasting, I did this, I did that. They talk about how they went to one mountain to go and pray. And they, pray. And they tell us as if what the, the miracles that happen and what God is doing is as a result of what they, they themselves have done. And so all what people see is they. People only see them. People don't see Christ. Many preachers have obscured Christ. They, 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 have, they, have, blocked, they have blocked Christ. So they, they stood, they, they are standing in front of Jesus and they are showing themselves to people to see. They don't allow people to see Christ. So they put Christ at the back. Whereas Christ should be in the front and they should be at the back. John the Baptist says, I will decrease and he will increase. How many preachers are doing that today? That, 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 that they should continue to decrease and Christ alone should continue to increase. In their lives, in their ministries, in their families, in everything they do. There are people who only see Christ. That their lives will only be a reflection of Christ. Their ministry, their preaching, their teaching, everything will point to Christ. Christ. That they will always, they will always do like this and say, Christ, look, Christ. Pointing men to Christ. Connecting men to Christ. Christ, Christ, Christ. But they point men to themselves. They present themselves as the superhero. They present themselves as the anointed of God. Some of them will even boast. We are the anointed of God. Whatever we decree, if we tell you something will happen, it will happen to you. If I use this my mouth to curse you, the curse will, will stay on your life. If I say, they, they, you see all kinds of boast, all kinds of pride. And that should not be. That should not be. That should not be. And again, what is wrong with what we, most preachers are preaching today? Most of what Christ wants us to teach and preach that are clearly and repeatedly emphasized in the scriptures, many preachers don't emphasize those ones again because those ones, once they are emphasized, it will not attract, attract crowd. And they are after crowd. They want crowd. And so, they don't emphasize those things. Let me read one of it. 
In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 to 8, New, King J, New KJV, it says, Now godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment. How many preachers are preaching contentment today? They don't preach contentment. And before you preach, before the Bible talks of contentment, it means that uh, things will not always go smoothly. We will not always have what we need in abundance. So there is need for contentment. So the Bible knows that we will not always have what we want. So there is need for contentment. And the Bible says, Godliness with contentment is a great gain. And he continues, he says, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with this we shall be content. That is the scripture. Contentment. Having food and clothing, we should be alright with that. How many, preacher, how many preachers are preaching those simple things again? That having food, having clothing, be contented with whatever God has provided for you. No, we will not preach that. The Bible talks about preach, deny himself. Jesus says, whosoever wants to be my disciple, let him deny himself. Let him say no to his own wish, his own ambition, his own goal. Let him deny himself. Let him say no to his own desires. Let him say no to himself. And pick only things that belong to Christ. How many preachers are preaching deniers of, of self today? Self-deniers today? No. Self-crucifixion. How many preachers are preaching today? No. In fact, instead of that, we preach self-esteem. Self-esteem is everywhere. Most preachers have turned to motivational speakers. They only motivate people. They only touch the emotions of people. They don't really touch the lives of people. They don't really touch the spirit of people. They don't touch the core, the, 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 the thing that they need to touch in the lives of people. They only touch their emotions, tear their emotions up, and then do a little drama on the stage and all that and all that and collect their money, collect their things and send them away again. And they will come back and they keep coming going and coming, going and coming, and their lives never change. Their lives never impact their, never impact their, their, their environment, their community. Because we are not preaching the truth. I've always been saying it. Truth and crowd, they are, 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 they, 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 are, uh, they are, they are not always friends. Crowd, truth does not attract crowd. Truth will only attract few people because not many people want to hear the truth. But we don't tell them the truth. In the scriptures, it is well stated and clearly spelled out that if we are true children of God, if we are true followers of Christ, we are going to suffer. There is sufferings, there is affliction, there is trial, there is tribulation, there is persecution. Bible mentioned all these things clearly. There is, no, there is no need for any theologian to come and interpret them. Jesus, the Bible says, Paul said, it is not given unto us only to believe on him, but to also suffer with him. He says, in this world, you will have tribulations. He says, but be of good cheer." Because I have overcome the world. Jesus himself said it. He said in me, you will have peace. But in the world, you will have tribulations. He said, but be of good cheers because I have overcome the world. There is suffering for true believers. There is tribulations. There is trial. There is affliction. There is persecution. How many preachers are preaching that today? That is also missing in most of the messages that we hear today. Brethren, what about holiness and righteousness? Nobody is preaching, is talking about holiness and righteousness again. Living right, living holy on daily basis. We are in a, at home, in the office, we are where, wherever we work, we should, people must see the holiness and the righteousness of God in our lives. But no preacher, men, not many preachers preach holiness and righteousness again. But what do we see? Prosperity gospel has taken over the stage. Prosperity gospel everywhere. 
gospel of abundance, 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 affluence. Gospel of affluence. Come to Jesus, we make you rich. He will make you, he will make you have to have to, 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 be, to be affluent. He will, he will give you riches and, and money and material things and all that. But is that what the scripture says? Is that what the, scripture, what the Bible promises? That is not. That is not. And brethren, I want us to also check it out from the word of God. You have most of these preachings around. Maybe you are even involved. Maybe you are also preaching the same thing. You fail to tell the people of God the truth of the word of God. You are telling them what, you, what they want to hear. You are telling them what will benefit you. Because you, you want in them what, what they want to hear. No wonder the Bible, has, the Bible has even said it. That in these later days, people will not be ready for the truth again. But they will have itching ears. So they want someone who will tell them what their ears want to hear. And that is what, what we have around us today. But if you are a preacher of the gospel, you need to choose to be different. You need to follow this narrow path. The scripture has said it. Broad is the way. And many people are found there. But it leads to destruction. But narrow and straight is the path that leads to eternal life. Only few people are found walking there. Choose to walk on the narrow path. If you choose to walk on the broad path, the end is destruction. But if you walk on the narrow path, then we will be able to preach sound doctrines, sound teachings of the word of God. And with this I have said, you also would have seen that uh, so many things are wrong with what most of our preachers are preaching today. I think you can consider this and think about it and pray to God that God will help you. Thank you and God bless you.